Hello and welcome to the presentation. This presentation is a case study of how one DoD supplier benefited from WAF automation. My name is Brian Aldridge. I'm a product support specialist with Millpack Technology. On the screen is my email address, my identifier and Twitter as well as LinkedIn and also a phone number where you can reach me. So this is the slide that we ended up on in a previous presentation of WAF Automation Overview. And this shows some of the more common interfaces that a WAF system should have, including barcode scanners, label and RFID printers, other systems such as ERP and other finance or order management or inventory management systems, different people in your company, and most importantly, interface with WAF to automate the entry of information. So on this case study, we want to talk about a plastic parts manufacturer. This company manufactures rotomolded and injection molded plastic parts. Basically, they make big clamshell cases to protect sensitive electronic and other equipment. And so when they, we first became aware of them, they were using WAF's web screens to input their WAF transactions, which meant they were getting constantly booted out just like anyone else. They were using specialized standalone software to print barcode and RFID labels, meaning they were uh, repeating their data entry. And because they were doing manual input of RFID and UID data, it meant that they could be prone to error and uh, as, as well as extra processing time. So the first shipment that we discussed with them, they started out on a Friday. They had a very large shipment to put in. Uh, hundreds and hundreds, I think it was about 1,200 RFID tags to put into wide area workflow. They were doing this by hand. And so they input data for nearly eight hours on a Friday. And then they got booted out of WAF before they finished. So of course the way WAF works, none of their data was saved so they had to start over again. So they came in on Saturday. They worked for about six hours and got booted out of WAF. So the first thing that they did is they started using a piece of our software that allowed them to uh, just get this first shipment put in. They'd already printed their RFID tags, they had already submitted their wide area workflow receiving report and invoice, they just needed to get the RFID tag data into wide area workflow. So the first thing they did is they brought up a screen to auto generate the case tags. All they needed to do was automatically generate all this RFID data put it into a transaction file and then submit it to WAF. So they started out in this screen, they put in their contract, shipment, and CLIN data. And then they put in the RFID tag data that they had already printed. So they put in the first pallet tag RFID number and the first case tag RFID number, identified how many cases were on the pallet, and uh, clicked on the generate button. This automatically generated their RFID tag data you can see in this list. And if we wanted to dig a little deeper, we can double click on one of these and we can see exactly what the pallet and RFID tag numbers are as well as all the other data that's related to it. Then with just a few mouse clicks, they were able to generate the electronic transaction file that WAF knows how to process. And then just a few more mouse clicks, they transmitted this entire file for the entire shipment off to WAF across the internet. Now all of this, Installing the software remotely with them, generating all the data, submitting it, took less than 30 minutes for what they had already worked on for 14 hours and had not been able to accomplish. Okay, so they were believers in the process. The next shipment, they said, well, this is great and we want to do this, but how can we do this better? And so we uh, moved kind of one step upstream and we moved back to where they were printing their labels. And we said, let's automate from the time you print the labels and then you won't have to input the RFID data, even the starting numbers. Um, it'll do it automatically. And so they started out in the white section on this form. They filled in their label information. On the gray section, they entered in their RFID requirements, whether it was cases they were generating. Um, there's a checkbox there to automatically print RFID pallet labels. This allows them to print collated sets of labels, a pallet label, all the case labels that go on the pallet, the next pallet label, all the case labels that go on that pallet, etc. And so they generated this data then, the same as they had before, but it happened automatically at the same time they printed their labels. And then again, a few more mouse clicks, they generate their transaction file and submit it off to Wide Area Workflow. Great, now we're really making some progress. The next step on the following shipment, we said, let's show you how we can automate from a receiving report. And so they started out in a piece of our software. 
created all their receiving report information, their DD250 information in there, with a lot of on-screen helpers to um, make it to where they don't have to type all this information. And then uh, they were able from there to generate their receiving report transaction automatically, a few mouse clicks, and they submitted that receiving report to White Area Workflow automatically. No duplicate entry of data. And so then with just a mouse click, they took all that receiving report data, pushed it over to the barcoding software, and automatically filled in this form. It automatically fills out all the barcoding data that you need to submit, except for pieces of data that may not be on the receiving report, like weights and cubes, some of those kinds of things, shelf life. And so they use this data without having to re-enter it, printed all their RFID tags, at the same time generating all their RFID data, and then just a few mouse clicks they were able to submit their RFID data to White Area Workflow where it joined up with their receiving report to make a complete receiving report in White Area Workflow. Okay, so the next step, if we move back upstream one more step, let's see if we can keep from having to type in this DD250 or this receiving report data in the first place. The government uses data from the government contracting systems in White Area Workflow to validate the data that you enter. They also make that data available electronically to you as a supplier if you know how to get it and you have software that knows how to use it. And so what they were then able to do is to automatically download their contract awards or their purchase requisitions, import it into the receiving report or WAF automation software, use that data to create their receiving report and submit that to WAF, use that same data to create all their barcode labels, including RFID tags, generate their RFID data, and submit that to White Area Workflow electronically. Very, very smooth end-to-end -end process. Well, then they came to us and said, hey, now uh, we, have a, we have a challenge on this shipment. We have UID. And so here's what the data looks like that has to be submitted to White Area Workflow for UID. You see here under the column that says uh, unique identifier, UID, there's a list of UIDs. And then under the RFID tag identifier column, there is a list of RFIDs, case tags, and pallet tags. And so what White Area Workflow expects is tell me the RFID tag number for the pallet, tell me the RFID tag number for all the cases on the pallet, and tell me which UIDs are in which specific case easy to do if you have just a handful of UIDs. If you have hundreds or thousands, uh, even dozens, it can get very complicated. So let's, uh, let's go back and look how we accomplished this. Actually, it was very little change. We still used the same process, downloaded the, the contract award from the government contracting systems, and then you have the opportunity either to just type in, if you have a very few, you can type in the serial numbers for the UIDs into this form. If you have more UIDs, you can either scan the barcodes on the UID marked parts, or you can import the UID data if you have that electronically, uh, like in a UID data management system or a UID verification system, a spreadsheet, some other kind of format, you can import that. From there, the process remains the same. The data still goes to White Area Workflow. Now the UIDs are added onto the shipment. The UID data is sent to the barcoding software so that when you print your barcodes, you print what you see there, which is a compliant MIL Standard 129 container label, exterior container label that includes the UIDs as well as RFID. At the time you print, the software associates the UIDs with the RFID case that those UIDs are in and by automatically printing pallet labels, it also automatically associates cases to pallets. So simply by printing the exterior container labels that they needed to print anyway, they were able to associate all this data and then with just a few mouse clicks, easily submit this to White Area Workflow and uh, also uh, being able to take embedded UIDs if you have those and submit those either to White Area Workflow or to the UID registry, whichever is appropriate. So this concludes our case study, our quick case study. There are some other resources that are available for you. We have a WAF Automation Overview as a separate presentation. We also have a step-by-step -step demonstration that shows you step-by-step -step how to go through the software and to accomplish each of these steps. You can get started looking at these resources by looking at web.milpac.com slash WAF 